Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating relationship and personal development coach and today I'm talking about why they will probably be back after the breakup if you do this. So if you've gone for a breakup and you are hoping that perhaps your ex will change their mind about you, they'll come back, um, the relationship will rekindle. So the best thing really to do is straight out of the bat go into no contact. Now, of course, obviously, if you do, there are some things that you need to apologize for, like if the breakup was your fault, if you did something that was unethical or perhaps you didn't appreciate them, then of course you need to do, you know, the things like apologize and things like that. But when you do apologize, you don't really want to bring up like the fact that you would like to meet up with them or that you would like for things to be for things to be changed basically you need to be very strong in the way that you apologize so basically the way that you do that and this is only if you apologize if you need to apologize to them i don't want you to have um this is an excuse to message your ex basically but if it was your fault and you haven't apologized already then you need to say to them something like um hey look i just wanted to apologize about the way that the breakup happened i apologize for this behavior I list the behaviors or things that you did that caused the breakup to happen and just say, I completely respect your choice um, in the breakup, but I don't want to, um, I don't, I, I don't want, I don't want the breakup to happen, but I respect your choice in the fact that the breakup has happened. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that I was really sorry. And that's it. You don't ask them any questions or anything like that. Just leave it like that. Now, your ex might respond to that, which is a good thing. Um, and if they are perhaps open to it then, if it seems like they've received that positively, um, then perhaps you can make up with them. Perhaps you can ask them if they would like to have a catch up one day and just leave the ball in their court. But if not, just leave it. If they don't message you or anything like that, and if it kind of seems a bit standoffish, if it seems a bit um, passive aggressive, or perhaps they just don't seem really pleased in their response to you, then it's best to just not respond to that message. Um, but the thing that the main thing that I want to talk about today, the like the meat and potatoes of what I want to say, is basically when you, you when you've gone into no contact and you vow basically to never contact your ex again unless it was of course the you know that you needed to apologize, which is the example I've already given. Then just get on with your own thing. You need to carry on with your life basically, um, and this is the thing that's really going to make the difference. So you go into no contact, you, you vow that you're never going to talk to them again, you walk away from your ex, and then you just get on with your own thing. Now, of course, it's a breakup, and if it's a breakup that you didn't want to happen, then you're probably really sad, and you're upset, um, and you're feeling bad about yourself, basically, which is completely 100% understandable. Um, you need to give yourself time to heal um, and get over it. Um, and also, you know, you don't make sure that you don't put anything on social media that your ex can see about how sad, about how cut up you are about the breakup. Don't put anything on social media for that, for them to see like that, because that's not going to help your situation. No amount of making them pity you or feeling sorry for you is going to make them fall in love with you again, right? In fact, he's going to do the opposite. They're just going to pity you and feel sad for you. And you don't want that. You want them to feel romantic feelings towards you. Or you want at least them to think that you're mysterious and be curious about you again, right? Or something like that. So just get on with your own devices and just continue with your life. Um, it may be the case that now you're out of this breakup, well, now that you're out of this relationship and you've gone through this breakup, you have a lot more time on your hands because obviously relationships take up a lot of time. Um, so now you have more time to work on your hobbies and, you know, to work on other things in your life, to go and see friends and family. You know, you have all this kind of free time um, you know, now that you're not in this relationship, which is good. And you should see that as a positive, that like you've got more free time now and you should use it wisely. Um, so obviously, like I was saying, you know, you, you're probably feeling kind of sad about this. You're probably feeling really bad, which is understandable. So I would recommend if you haven't done so already that to go and speak to a therapist about it, especially if you are really, really feeling horrible about it or if you can't afford that kind of thing, then kind of be your own therapist. Um, it might be the case that you read a self-help book or something, or it could be the case that you um, write down your thoughts and feelings. I think this is a really, 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 really solid method on how to, you know, process things by writing them down. Now, when you write something down, though, and I say this a lot, because um, I think it's such a great method, 
Um, but when you do write things down about how you're feeling, about the relationship, um, especially those memories that keep on recurring in your head, like if you have, keep on having recurring thoughts about a situation, then especially with your ex, then you need to write that down, right? Well, it could be any situation really that you feel badly about, you kind of need to write that down. But we're talking about your ex here, so, you know, if it's memory, if you have a lot of memories about your ex that you keep on thinking about, that you keep on going over in your head, then you need to write those things down. However, when you write these things down, you know, you have to be truthful and you have to be concise and basically write down exactly what can hap- what happened to the best of your memory, right? Um, but you want to write it down in a way that... Um, you want to write it down in a way that it's not intended for someone else to read it, right? Because a lot of people do that. A lot of people write things down like a memoir that they're expecting someone to come across one day like their ex or a friend or a family member or something like that. But you don't want to do that, right? You want to write it down in the most... Because a lot of people, when they do that, they kind of exaggerate the truth a little bit or they manipulate the truth a bit or they make it sound more poetic. But it's basically better to write it down just like how your memory recalls it and be as truthful as possible now if there's some things in there that you think are embarrassing that you're ashamed of that you're not happy with whatever it may be um that you know perhaps you conducted yourself in a way that you weren't happy with or it wasn't nice or something like that which can happen when you're in relationships and you're in the heat of the moment um and if you're embarrassed about it and you don't want anyone to find it then the best thing for you to do is to like burn it afterwards or to just delete it if it's on your phone or if it's on your computer like you've written it as in a word document or something but you know the important thing is is that you're truthful about it right and if you have memories that you keep on having after you've um, written it down then you need to write those out again because for whatever reason your brain hasn't processed it you need and you need to process these things basically so <clears throat> if you need to write things down multiple times then do it um, but there'll be some memories that you'll only need to write down once and you won't feel as intense about it because that's essentially what this does right what this exercise does with writing things down when you write things down in this way um, and you're truthful about it you're not bsing yourself or trying to bs someone else you're not manipulating the truth and you're being completely honest with what you write down um, it makes you feel less intense about it. And this is an exercise that I've done for a couple of years now where I've written down memories. It's not necessarily about exes or anything like that, but just memories that I've personally um, keep on recurring for me. When I write those down, I don't feel as intensely about it. Like there are some things that I would think that I used to think about a couple of years ago, which were really intense and I'd feel really sad about it for days. But since writing them down, I don't feel that way anymore. It's not like you have amnesia and you forget it. It's more like it, it just doesn't feel as emotionally intense anymore when you do have like something that reminds you of that event, right? Which is great and that's something that you definitely need. So I highly recommend that you do that if you personally cannot get a therapist um, that can help you through this situation because, you know, heartbreaks and things like that, especially if it was a long-term relationship, especially if it was an intense relationship, um, it can very much um, affect you, right? And um, if you can get a therapist, that's great. But if not, this is a great alternative. Or it might be something that you want to do both. You want to get a therapist and you want to do this writing method. Um, And again, like I said, you don't have to keep it. You can burn it, you can flush it down the toilet, or you can delete it if it's on your phone or your computer, right? So as long as you're honest with yourself, that's the most important thing. And you're writing down as much, basically, as you can remember. Um, And that I believe that will really, really help you. Okay, especially if you, you know, take it, take it seriously as well. You know, give yourself a lot of time to do this. Don't just be like, okay, I'm just going to write it for five minutes or whatever. You know, put on some music, whatever it may be, write it down and get it all out. Um, And I guarantee, slightly guarantee, because I don't know 100% um, that you will feel better within a couple of days. Right. So that's that's something that's going to help you. But also, you know, you need to carry on with your life. Try and do things that are good for you, right? So it could be working on a hobby that you've always wanted to do. It could be working on a project that you've always wanted to do. Um, it could be starting up a new um, habit, like perhaps you want to learn to play an instrument. Um, you know, doing something that's really going to help you and that's really, really good for you, that feels good for you. Now, often after a breakup, people burn the candle at both ends. And what I mean by that is, is that they go out and they be- 
go crazy basically, you know, they go out drinking, they eat lots of junk food, they do lots of destructive things. I'm hoping that you will try and do the opposite. Now I'm not saying you can't do any of that, you can probably do it once or twice, but if it's something that's occurring um, like every week, then you really need to look at that and not and just basically stop doing that kind of thing because you are burning the candle at both ends. And if you're feeling crappy because you ate, you know, some of the wrong things or perhaps you, you drank too much or something, then that's not going to help you, right? And it's going to make you feel worse about yourself and it's not going to help you heal over the situation. So try at least like 80% of the time to just, um, you know, eat the right things, exercise regularly, do things that are nourishing for you, that are good for your soul, you know, do things like with inspiration, you know, what inspires you, that's a good question to ask yourself, like, what puts you in a really inspired mood, that like, a creative mood, you know, and things like that, you know, try and do something that's, you know, creative, um, that can help you feel good and feel uplifted, basically, um, and that should really, really be a big benefit to you, and it should help you a lot. Now, what you've got to remember with your ex is that there, they, there, is, there, there is always a chance that they could come back because you can never know 100% how someone is truly feeling. So there is a chance that they could come back, but there's also a, a chance as well that they're not going to come back. So you have to assume, basically, that they're not coming back. Just assume that they're not coming back. Just assume that you're in the majority of cases where people don't get back together with their exes, right? And basically live from that place. Um, um, and don't, because if you're always like living in hope that your ex is going to come back, then it's going to prevent you from moving on. Whereas if you just automatically just think, okay, the door is closed, they're not coming back, I'm going to do this, I'm going to focus on these things, I think it puts you in a better place. And if your ex does come back, then it's a happy surprise, right? Um, especially if you feel like the relationship can be mended. Now, of course, you know, it all depends on context on your specific situation. So if you like coaching with me and if you'd like to figure out basically, you know, what could be happening with you um, and you can tell me more about your specific situation, then, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com um, uh, to get coaching with me. Uh, the services that I give are emergency email coaching, which is a, the cheaper option. And also there's a private video coaching. Now I think sometimes people get a bit confused with private video coaching because basically these a private video coaching is where you tell me what your situation is via email and I send you a private video link like a YouTube video like this one um, where I go through what you've said in your email to me, right? That's the more expensive option but the cheaper option is the email coaching. Um, and of course there are things on there that are um, I've got a coaching, a personal development coaching workbook, which isn't about getting your ex back, but it is good about um, uh, helping you reach your goals if you have certain goals, if you have personal development goals, if you've got like business goals and things like that, that can really help with that sort of thing. Um, so thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally, then you can go and follow that link, the www.christineloveridge.com link, um, and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.